Thank you. Our studio audience here, please feel free to clap there. Johnny, um, absolutely amazing. We had one of the one of the comments that came back. It said that that's a new version of your guitar. Well, this is actually the real version, uh, the real Johnny Highland model Kiesel guitar. I, I think on our summer conference you had the red one. Yes, and that was actually the uh, the very first prototype. Mm -hmm. So the knobs were still in the form of a tele a real Telecaster. Right, right, right. And uh, you can actually buy that guitar. It's called a Kiesel Solo. Mm -hmm. So this is actually the JH6, and man, I'm so proud of this guitar, man. It's As you can see, we moved the knobs up, because yeah. I have steak fries for fingers. <laughs> so I needed to get the knobs where I could do, you know, do volume swells, and yeah. I could actually get to my switch easier, so I can do a volume swell and flip my switch at the same time. So it makes Perfect. it real easy for me, especially when I do have the steak fries for fingers. So I don't know why more so, guitars uh, don't don't do that with well having and you know steve the one thing it. that we did with this guitar man is it's got some strat features to it mm -hmm. obviously strat size pickups but with a bass plate and the bridge for that telly twang yeah but it's got kind of like the arm cut is like i don't know if y'all can see oh, that yeah yeah but the arm cuts really you know strat sized and of course it's got a belly cut for the big man mm. <laughs> and uh but you know this guitar is just so comfortable man it's probably my favorite guitar i've ever owned in my lifetime man it's uh it's just so comfortable stainless steel frets which i've never had before uh truly so fun to bend on man and wow. of course i can do all my bends behind the nut and all that stuff and but i mean even the heel on the back man look how recessed this is yeah oh, so that you nice. can really get your hand up the fretboard so everything about this guitar steve was just truly a dream come true and of course i thank jeff kiesel and the kiesel family man yeah. so great folks. if you guys are interested in a jh6 you can actually log on to kieselguitars.com or call 858-GUITARS. <laughs> and uh, for all you bass players, TJ is actually a Kiesel endorser as well. TJ, what bass are you holding there, buddy? I have a brand new JV5. And actually, brand new for, I think, just a couple months ago, 
they stop using a, a back plate or a neck plate for the thing, and they do the same kind of thing on the basses as they do on the guitars. So you, nice. you get all the way up. It's really cool. This one's the same um, raw tone, uh, single piece of ash um, in a antique ash and scarlet color. Awesome. It's beautiful, it's man. Trainers, it really 34 is. 34 inches. Good. Pretty, it's pretty standard. Beautiful. Take us through some of the sounds on the pickups. Like yeah, was, sure, man. Pickup sound let like? me go back and let me just kick off some dirt here. And uh, so the, the bridge pickup, man, is totally chicken picking twang, you know. Now, if you go to the second position, there is a five-way in here. Uh -huh. Second position is like total Albert Lee, Steve Warner, you know. <laughs> you know, and then, of course, middle position now is um, your, like the middle position on a telly. So it's bridge and neck. Uh -huh. And that's good if you're doing like country shuffles. Uh -huh. You know, so you can do all the steel bends, and of course I've got a decimator on in here because yeah. we have an inherent buzz, folks, and we're yes. not even drinking. <laughs> then the fourth position is actually just the middle pickup by itself. So, Steve, really? people have asked, why did you do that? Because I never used the fourth position on a Strat at all. Mm -hmm. I just found it was kind of redundant next to the second position, you know, that was a little bit more trebly and just had a better tone for mm -hmm. me. So I, what I really wanted was one, three, and five to be like a telly, uh -huh. but then the fourth position was the middle strat tone. Uh -huh. And that's why we go to the middle pickup now on the fourth position. So, so if you're like a funky player. You know, you can get really good, you know. It's got that bite of a middle strat yeah, pickup, yeah, you know. Yeah. But then, of course, you have the good old neck pickup in fifth position. Which really makes this guitar effective for me because I have middle telly, middle strat, and neck pickup side yeah, by side. Very versatile. So I can do all my blue stuff. Or I can roll the tone knob off and have a really nice, you know, like... So it gives you really nice jazz tones and kind of nice fat warm tones. Beautiful. So, uh, but all of the positions work fantastic with uh, distortion as well. Very, very versatile guitar. It's got a hip shot hardtail bridge, but you can get it um, with a Kiesel tremolo system that Kiesel did with hip shot. Good. One of the best trems in the world. And of course, if you're a T-style player, you can most normally never get a tremolo on a telly. Yeah. So yep. with the JH6, if you like trems, you can order it that way. So. Uh, but 20, 22 frets, stainless steel, yep. bird's eye maple fingerboard, maple neck. Beautiful. Of course, this one's a five piece. It's got two walnut, st walnut strips in the back. Yeah. Keys of locking tuners, graph tech nut, tusk nut, and uh, just real proud of it, man. Beautiful. Such a great guitar. Got a couple of questions already coming in. Tellaru is saying, hey, Johnny, when did you go to using the thumb pick? About six or seven months ago now, Steve. Actually, brother, I was uh, experiencing some hand trouble on my right hand. I was actually, yep. yeah, yep. I was actually at a, at a, we actually have a residency gig down at Acme Feed and Seed, first right. Wednesday of every month, and folks, just so it's you know, crazy great. oh, it's been a lot of fun, but my last farewell show is December 5th, mm -hmm. so if you get to the Nashville area, come on out to that show, there's going to be a lot of my buddies stopping out, and if your hands are feeling better, brother, you can get up and play with us too, we'd <laughs> love to have you, but uh, yeah, that's going to be a really big show December 5th, so if you're in the Nashville area, come on out. What but, made you want to do the thumb pick? I, you know, Steve, honestly, man, I, I consider it just like all my guitar playing and everything I do in music. I play 22 instruments, but I really feel like every part of this has been a gift from God. So when, when my, you know, thumb and forefinger started experiencing really bad troubles, I could not hold my V-Pick. Now, everybody knows right, right, right. I wear my Johnny Highland V-Pick proudly mm -hmm. because I love V-Picks. Mm -hmm. And I just wish that I had uh, enough strength and uh, I don't know what the proper word is, just but a grip comfort, yeah. you know, just to be able to grip it and play. But I found that the thumb pick was 
I started dropping the flat pick. Mm -hmm. my, my thumb and forefinger would just cramp up, and I'd drop the flat pick, and then, of course, the song's over when that happens. Mm -hmm. So I found with a thumb pick, if I ended up having any sort of cramp, I could just throw my hand out, mm -hmm. you know, and hopefully alleviate whatever cramp I was having at the time, but the pick wouldn't go anywhere. Right. And on top of that, man, I'm, you know, being a chicken picking country guitar lover, man, I w always was a fan of Chet Atkins and Merle Travis and yeah. Jerry Reed, of course, you know. So it was funny. I, of course, was hanging out with Tom Brash. We do a, a gluttony session at a Chinese restaurant <laughs> once a month. And I said, Brash, I'm having these hand troubles, man, and it's just bothering me so much. He's like, boy, slap a thumb pick on. And I said, you know, Noki Edwards from the Ventures gave me a thumb pick. I might try it. Mm -hmm. But then, of course, I spent like 350 bucks on different thumb picks, man, just trying to find the right one. Yeah, right one that works for because you. Because Jerry Reed had an old saying, man, if you get one that's too tight, you get what they call Jerry Reed's blue thumb on the end where you cut your yeah. circulation yeah, off. Circulation, yeah. So, so uh, I don't know what's worse, having Jerry Reed blue thumb or having, you know, cramping from holding the flat pick. But Well, I noticed that even when you were doing your... your country normal chicken pick and stuff yes that you were not using your index finger well and that's when I had where I had to go back to Tom Bresh man I said Bresh I said I don't want to you know just like anything else like jazz players are very uh, astute and and uh, really really care about the the art of mm -hmm. jazz guitar mm -hmm. and I said man thumb pickers are the same you know I want to make sure that I'm doing I'm doing this okay I said but right now man I'm not really using the index finger at all and I, he goes, what are you doing with it? And I said, eh, picking my nose. Or I said, you know, just not using it at all. It's just hanging there. And he said, well, man, if it worked for Jerry Reed, it'll work for you. I had no idea that Jerry Reed had arthritis in his index finger, and he would curl it under, which hence the name the claw. Chad Atkins right. gave him that name right. because of the claw. It looked like a claw. And so I was like, oh, man, that is so cool. So then, you know, there I had it, man. I was okay to leave the old index finger hanging. And, yeah. But I found that over time, man, it took a while. It yeah. took a few months before I could really be Johnny and do my thing, you know. But it's still a, a work in progress, man. I'm still trying to get better and better with it. So well, I feel like I'm the kid back in the woodshed again, you know. Well, it, it is so great having you um, illustrate that. Let's, let's see if we can. Um, Stephen, maybe we can get a really tight shot of the camera three over here and get a tight shot on Johnny's hand. And maybe you could do just some chicken picking sort of a thing so that folks can see how you're using it. Sure. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Um, fantastic. Um, let's see. Heavy, heavy 1192 is saying, Johnny, what gauge and brand of strings do you have? Oh, on that well, I, am, I have been a long time endorser and supporter of Elixir strings. Elixir, yeah. And I use uh, Elixir Nano Web 9 to 42. 9 to 42. So pretty light. You're pretty light. And the reason I use those, Steve, when you bend like I do, man, you've got to have light strings on there. Yeah. And I'll be honest, man, if Elixir made sevens, I'd use sevens. <laughs> I really would. I'm, and, you know, Billy Gibbons and I are buddies. So I, when I, you know, played one of Billy's guitars, I was like, oh, man, it was like so awesome. So I was like, man, I wish Elixir made sevens, dude, because I'd use them for sure. Does he use them that light? Yes. Really? He has a Billy Gibbons um, Dunlop set that is seven to, I don't know, like 38 or 36, oh, gosh, something like crazy. that. Yeah, it's, it's really awesome. But you, but, you know, people say, oh, well, there's a thing with, there's an issue with tone, you know, using lighter strings. Uh, Billy Gibbons has no trouble with tone. Yeah, so yeah. there you have it there you in go. a nutshell. 
<laughs> All right, well, as you have questions out there, please uh, go ahead and type them in. Uh, in our chat. Uh, if you can use all caps, we realize you're not shouting, but that helps us be able to uh, um, pick out the question amongst all the chatter that's going on um, here. All right. Um, hey, I saw Vintage Guitar Magazine. Oh, my goodness, man. You, yeah. you were on the list with some esteemed guitar players to be country guitarist of the year. You know, Steve, I'm so amazed by that, brother, and so honored, man. I, what an I mean, honor. The list was just it was Brad Paisley, Keith Urban, Vince Gill, Albert Lee, and myself. And, of course, they had me listed third. But I, I don't know how I even, I mean, when I'm looking at, like, Red Vocart and Guthrie Trapp and Daniel Donato and, you know, Brent Mason. Brent's not even, I mean, for Brent's goodness sakes, man. Yeah. I, I'm like, man, that's just, uh, I'm just so honored to be, a, to be on that list, man. What a, what a sincere honor and a pleasure. And, of course, I hope everyone went out and voted. And that... that we're we're having the show too late. That closed yesterday, didn't it? It did. Well, no, actually, it closed today. It closed today. Yes, it closed they today. They can still vote until I, midnight honestly, tonight? Honestly, I don't know. <laughs> well, if you can, go to Vintage. I believe it's probably a Vintage Guitar. Okay, uh, we are saying, uh, John is saying yes. So you go to Vintage, I guess, Vintage Guitar Magazine, whatever the... the, the uh, Google it. Google it. Our, our, our uh, wonderful moderators are on that right now. And if you could put up, uh, Doug or Neil, put up the link for that when you have it. Um, that would be great. Yeah, uh, vote for vote for Johnny. Get that in there. Um, cool. Um, that's a great question. Charles Snyder is asking, what is one of the best lessons that you have learned, maybe technique-wise or practice-wise? You know, to be honest with you, man, it's it's funny because putting the thumb pick on has made me go back to the drawing board, so to speak. And one of the hardest things to get used to with a thumb pick is using a down upstroke. Oh, and yeah. so. Even holding a flat pick, you know, you still have to get to where you can, you know, and of course I'm, my uh, noise reducer is taking it off. But Now, guys, I know it sounds crazy. I'm just sitting here holding an A and just da-da-da-da-da, right? That's tough. But though. I'm telling you, it is really, when you get into, so what I would start doing is using all the A's and just... So I'm jumping strings to get to the next A. And so what's happening is my thumb is getting used to going in between the strings. Yep. And here again, guys, it's the most simple concept in the world. But do you realize there's a lot of even rock players out there that use all legato style. And so they hit one note with a pick and just, right? Yep. And what happens over time is as you play like that, you start to lose the, uh, you know, the down upstroke of your pick. Yeah. Now, guys like John Petrucci, that's not an issue, man, because they play so fast, you know, and Steve Vai, guys like that. Yeah. But I found over the years that you can get very comfortable in how you play and in what you play, mm -hmm. and then you forget about the small things. So yeah. even with the thumb pick, I'm going back now and just down up strokes and practicing mm -hmm. and driving my sweet Kimmy girl totally crazy, <laughs> which is just awesome. I love it, though. What a great exercise. Just, just going through octaves or, or notes of the same because it involves string skipping. It does. So if you do it with a flat pick, it's got its own challenges, but with a thumb pick, it's even more challenging. And you can set a metronome as well and start building your speed yeah. over time. And I don't really know where I am on the metronome anymore. I just kind of listen to it and I have a, I forget which one I use now on my iPhone, but I can basically just grab a bar and pull it and it'll speed it up. Yeah. yeah. So, but you can actually get to where you can go like, I actually count like one... Two, three, four, right? So as I'm doing that, though, you can go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. You can count like that. But then you can get to the point where you... I mean, I know it sounds simple, but <laughs> even myself, there's times I don't play it very clean. So I go, all right, I'm going to slow the metronome down and go back and... Da -da 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 the, yeah, it's and it's it's crazy because you have to literally take the time to practice yeah. it. Yeah. Now people would say, "Well, Johnny Highland, you've played for forty years. I don't care, man. I stuck this thumb pick on, and my whole playing style changed. Uh -huh. So that means I'm back to the drawing board, right, with everybody else. And and you know, it's fine. 
Yeah. I'm actually enjoying it because it's making me take a look and work on the simpler things with yeah. guitar playing that people just skip over. Yeah. You know, technique like that, as you were saying, it doesn't come by accident. No. Technique no, it does not. improvement doesn't come by accident. It is slow, grueling, time-consuming. It is. Focused effort gets, gets the job and, and done. And, you know, I will say, Steve, I, I want everybody watching to know, if you learn it, Nothing else from me at all except this one phrase. Always remember this. Uh, every note, make every note count. Mm -hmm. Make every note as clean as possible. You do not want to waste notes. Notes are too valuable. So if you're playing a, you know, if you're playing a line, see, if you miss a note, do it slower. time you'll grow that speed and it'll all but it'll all still sound clean the more you practice slow and start to build yourself but guys I'm telling you if you find that you're unclean go right back slow again and keep yeah. practicing just just so that that was a great lick play it for a super slow sure yeah all I'm really using here is like an a pentatonic mm -hmm. but like the old simple bluegrass lick yeah. yeah right but I'm just carrying it further so I'm going so you can play it two different ways using yeah. the flatted third in there and rolling it on right. the low end or yeah. you can just play it you know straight ahead you know in a pentatonic fashion but Fun lick to practice too, and that's a fun lick to keep clean. Yeah, um, and he's doing the pull-offs. I wish so often that folks could see my angle when I'm with the guests because it's so brilliant. You can see exactly what's happening. So, and, and a lot of those notes when he was pulling off from his first finger, his index finger, you're pulling life on the third string, like from the A to the G, from the E to the D on the fourth string. All those little nuances there in case you're kind of wondering now what's Steve, happening. Now, Steve, let me interrupt wise. you just for a moment. Why do I pull off coming back down? Because there are opportunities, if you will, within chicken picking to do some neat little tricks. So the reason I practice it that way is because when I do like... Um you can put in little trills and little double stop lines and stuff like that. So I always practice pull offs coming back, single note, you know, down up with the pick or fingers, hybrid style if you prefer that. So I'm picking going down this way, and as I come back, I'm trying to pull off so that I can leave room if I want to stick a fun chicken pick and lick in there. Now, just even on that lick that you were just doing there, digga, 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 slow mm -hmm. that down. All Play that really is, Steve, is the E to F sharp note, and I'm hitting the G and B string open Kay. with these big, long fingernails. I didn't have time to go get them done tonight. Oh, man, those are but they're long. put an eye out with but those. But see, the reason I have left them this long, too, though, is because a thumb pick is longer. It's sticking out, yeah. yeah. So I'm trying to keep the level of yep. hitting the yep. strings the same. Yep. But, of course, we went to Virginia last week, and we've been doing house showings and all this crazy stuff. And so Johnny's nail girl has been on vacation for three weeks. <laughs> so I'm like, Jenny, please come back. Because these nails are, whoo. I mean, it was good for Halloween, man. It was like Freddy Krueger. <laughs> Hi, little kids. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, it's all that is is E to F sharp and then G and B open. So... <laughs> And then you can roll backwards. So. And that little triplet that you're throwing there. Da, 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 da. Yeah, it's okay. the same exact thing, only well, you're rolling backwards now. So you're rolling from the G and B with a double stop open yeah. to an F sharp to an E, e to a D to a open. To the D. Yeah. And then you can do a either a C-sharp note, or I like to grab the C and bend it down just okay. a half tone. Yeah, yeah. So it's a real fun chicken picking exercise. And, of course, if uh, even you rock players out there watching, if you love rock and roll, stick that in the middle of an A rock lick and see what it does for you. It's pretty fun. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, 
we have a question. What thumb pick are you using? That's just a regular Dunlop. It's a Dunlop, it? man, yeah. And Is that a uh, medium? I th you know, Steve, I can't see it, buddy. Um, I can't tell. We are looking at a regular Dunlop medium. It is not very large. I don't know. Maybe we can get a shot of that. Well, see, this is the Jerry Reed blue thumb I was talking about. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's gripping pretty tight on there. Yeah, it is. But, you know, Tom Brash is teaching me, too, about thumb pick placement. Mm -hmm. And just like holding a flat pick, everybody has their own style of where the index finger sits on the bottom of the pick, mm -hmm. how angled it is. So some guys like to wear the, some of the new cats on the scene like to wear the thumb pick real far back past their thumbnail. Oh, goodness. And Brash is like, no, man, stick it like right to where the thumb pick is, right at the base of your thumb. Yeah. So I try to keep it there, mm -hmm. but you need to find a pick that's not going to move back and forth as you're playing faster notes. Yeah. So I'm kind of, I actually prefer a Dunlop large, but I find the mediums stay on better yeah. and they're a little tighter. Yeah. But I have to break them in, and that's, that's kind of a process. So yeah. I go yeah. through blue thumb quite a bit. Um, um, Keith, a good question. Keith Bates is saying, are you uh, going on tour? Any, uh, got any dates coming Man, up? Man, I'll tell you, we are starting something brand new. Um, we have the Johnny Highland Lessons Tour that, we've been, that we're actually gearing up for in 2019. It kind of took us a while to build that. Um, John Herring, my manager, and I have been working pretty hard on that. And essentially, how that started was when I started experiencing the hand trouble. Yeah. I couldn't really go out and do, you know, a, a string of dates, one date after the other, and, and still be able to give my best, mm -hmm. you know, to my fans. And so, so John said, well, man, you love to teach. Why don't we take the teaching on the road? Mm -hmm. So I literally will take two little rolling micro cubes mm -hmm. and, and sit in a hotel room and teach one-on-one -on -one privately with people on the road. So I may come to your city uh very soon in 2019 and on top of that the highland band will of course be out doing dates as well yeah it just won't you know i'm not the guy that wants to be out 250 dates a year anymore yeah so and i know right now very sadly you are um, getting ready to move i am away from our our beloved home back to your home in virginia well, or kimmy's home, kimmy's home. Kimmy's yeah, yeah. yeah home yes and to be honest with you steve i'll, I'll say one more thing about the touring thing we are actually starting, you know, Joe Satriani has a thing called G3. Oh, yeah. Where yeah. it's uh, he and Steve Vai and either John Petrucci or Ingve or whomever. Mm -hmm. Well, I come up with this idea of forming a CP3, mm -hmm. Chicken Pickers 3. <laughs> so right now we've been talking to the great Red Vocard about going mm -hmm. out with me and, you know, guys like Greg Martin or yeah. Greg Cock or different guys yeah. who are just phenomenal chicken pickers that could jump in. Um, you know, like, say, uh, Pete Anderson out in L.A. If we mm -hmm. go out to the California side of the country, mm -hmm. you know, Pete might come out and do some dates with us. Or, yeah. you know, while we're in through Nashville and Memphis and stuff, Brent might do yeah. some. And Kentucky, Greg Martin. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, we have all kinds of uh, ideas for CP3, and we're really trying to develop that for 2019 as well. Wonderful. Now, the move to Virginia. I will say this. I am 43 years old, and I've been in Nashville 22 years really and to be honest with you steve i really find that with a with as roscoe pico would train would say on the dukes of hazard <laughs> Cuckoo, it's been hot pursuit you know <laughs> and i've been in hot pursuit of my career for that long that's not going to ever change mm -hmm. well the only thing that's really changing is where i lay my head down at night yeah you know yeah. and of course i'm closer to uh we're closer to kimmy's family, kimmy's family you know aunt joanne right. and uh and her dad, you know, and they're getting up there in age, yeah. you know, so we want to spend as much time with them as we can. And on Aunt Joanne's farm is my favorite fishing hole. So <laughs> when Johnny's not playing guitar, you know where I'll be, buddy. But Well, that is that is that is uh, Nashville's loss temporarily, but I know you'll be back around oh, quite yes. often. Quite often. You know, often. man, Nashville will always be home to me. And I must say, man, you know, the, the Nashville scene mm -hmm. um, and the – the style, if you will, of country music today has completely changed. Yeah, yeah. The, the rate at which we did sessions is all changing. Yeah. Um, I'm doing a lot of things online these days. Yeah, you know, remotely. I do a Facebook Live every Sunday yeah. um, when I can. And, uh, and that's on a, your website? Yeah, actually, that's on my Facebook page, uh, my official page, Johnny Highland Official. On the Facebook page? Yes. So, uh, but, you know, I'm doing a lot more on social media these days, yeah. Yeah. you know, than being around town doing stuff out, yeah. you know. All right, well, let's give something away. We've been yabbering on here for a while. Let's give something away. This is, um, hey, let's, 
since we're kind of doing some country stuff, Bill Cooley was uh, here. Do you know Bill? I He's don't. one of the rhythm players, uh, kind of a legendary rhythm player here in town. I think he played for with Kathy Mateo for a little Kathy while. Kathy Mateo, yeah, sure. And yeah, great, yeah, Bill, great yeah. guy. Bill left a couple of CDs. This is a Bill Cooley in Search of Home CD. So the winner of this is... Larry Six String. Larry Six String, please send me your information at service at mightyoakmusic.com, and uh, we will uh, send out Bill's CD to you. So we love Bill. I'm glad that worked out. He is a uh, fine gentleman. Really am, enjoyed getting to meet him and look forward to uh, um, having him on the show more in the future. If you want to get in touch with Johnny, and uh, just keep up with all the great things that he's doing. He's got True Fire courses going out. He's got his uh, uh, Acme monthly dates here in Nashville. He's, he's got uh, One the more Facebook left. Live. Yep, Facebook uh, Live every Sunday. Every Sunday coming up. Um, if you want to keep up tr- with Johnny, go to it's johnnyhighland.net, and that'll get you to his website and all the great things that he's doing. And I know... At least for a while there, you were doing Skype lessons. Are I still do. Still do yes, Skype I lessons. Yes, I still do Skype and FaceTime lessons, yes. Man, it, the Internet, it's a wonderful thing. It you is. can just send an email and get a Skype lesson with some of the greatest guitarists on the planet. Um, if you are not taking advantage of these great uh, resources and you're just sitting there in your room wishing you could get better, wow, there's, there's getting less and less of excuse to be able to do that. Uh, it is such a great thing to be able to be able to get folks like Johnny uh, uh, set up a time, and uh, you work it out where you can just play a little bit. It's invaluable. Um, uh, let's see what else we have. We have our fingerstyle guitar retreat that we um, uh, finished up just a few weeks ago. In fact, I hurt my hand uh, during that. Uh, we were picking so much that I hurt my hand. No, actually, I hurt it a little bit before that, and uh, probably just all of the uh, lifting and stuff we had to do for the retreat probably didn't help. Um, so we had a fantastic retreat. Uh, it was great. Joe Robinson and, and uh, Phil Kage and uh, Trevor Gordon Hall, so many great players. We have next year's retreat. Uh, in, this is November of 2019. Wow. You're probably going, why, Steve, are you announcing something that's a year away? Hey, half, over half the slots are filled currently. So if you're interested in being a part of that retreat, uh, we've got Don Ross, the only uh, person in history to have won the Fingerstyle Championship twice. Incredible. And uh, incredible player. Uh, Candy Rat artist. Uh, from, he's from uh, uh, Canada. And uh, so he's going to be our official guest artist there. And we may, we'll have some other wonderful folks that pop in there as well. If you're interested, uh, our wonderful moderators are putting up the link for that. Um, and so that's, that's our fall retreat. Now, our summer guitar gathering which, Johnny, you've been to yes, so I have. many times. You've been a regular. I'm kind of half wondering if we could snatch <laughs> you out of Virginia. I bet you could, To buddy. get maybe you and the guys to come down for our uh, guitar gathering, our summer guitar that gathering. That would be fun, man. Uh, this is Wednesday, June 12th through Saturday, June 15th, right here in Nashville. If you're interested in just getting away and being playing guitar with some of the greatest guitarists on the planet... That, our summer conference is just perfect for that. We've got different styles that are represented. Uh, we've got jazz. We do, we do bluegrass. We do flat picking stuff. We've got um, blues, all kinds of things. If you're interested, check it out uh, at guitargathering2019.com, and uh, we can uh, get you fixed up with that. You could reserve your spot for that. Okay, um, one last thing, and then I want you guys to play something else for us. Um, Johnny, you've got a new um, gospel album yes, I that do. you're working on. Tell us about that. Man, I am so proud of this album, Steve. It's, uh, it's been one I've wanted to do my entire career, man. I've, you know, I, I really believe that my whole gift of music came from the Lord God, and I wanted to do a record specifically just to say thanks to him mm-hmm. and just pick out a lot of my old favorite church tunes I used to do back when I was a kid. And also call in some of my favorite pickers, you know, and, and my dear friends, you know. So I've... And did I see that you had the legendary Pig Robinson? Yes, sir. Just last Keys. night. Yes. Incredible. He was amazing, man. He really was. And I talk about a legend that has played on just oh, about man. every. You know, "14 Carat Mind" by Gene Watson, and all the Conway and Loretta stuff, and, yeah. and all the. I mean, man, you name the country song, buddy. He's probably played on it. 
Yeah. But he, uh, yeah, it was just an honor. But we got Greg Martin from the Headhunters on a track. Yeah. We've got yeah. Phil Kagey coming in. We've got Jack Pearson coming in. We've had Brent on a tune, Brent Mason. We've had, um, oh, well, I asked Jimmy O, and he was ready to do it, but then Diamond Rio started their Christmas yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's been so, he's uh, busy, he's these so days. busy these days, man. But I love Jimmy O, man. What a great man. Yeah. And I'm trying to get James Burton on it even. So, wow. Uh, wow. And I know I'm leaving somebody out, but, but uh, man, we've had so many wonderful people, you know, that, that I've called as friends and just said, man, I'm doing this record. Would you play on a track? And they've all said yes, man. So I'm, When do you I'm, think that's going to be out, do you think? You know, we're going to actually, I was hoping to have it out before Christmas, but getting all the guest artists to come in and play takes time, you know, mm -hmm. and, and a lot of scheduling. So we're going to have like certificate slips with a pre-buy um, mm -hmm. before Christmas, but I think it's going to start, uh, it's going to be released and start shipping, I think, in early January. Wonderful. Yeah. Speaking of all those great, um, great players and great men, we lost, a, we lost one of the greats this we week. We did, man. Uh, Roy Clark. Um, just incredible. Oh, he influenced he was such a... so many. Did you ever get a chance to meet you him? You know, I never did, man. There was... I, I came so close a number of times to meeting Chet and Roy, and I never got to, man. Yeah. I I uh, feel so badly about that because Roy was a, a huge inspiration to pretty much every country guitarist in yeah. some way. Yeah. Uh, Hee Haw was obviously a, a show that allowed that to happen, you know, yeah. and I remember yeah. being a young kid just being glued to the TV set at Roy yeah. Clark. So, yeah. As much as he is associated with Nashville and was in Nashville for many, many years, he has not been in Nashville for for uh, quite some time. I think he's been out of Branson. Uh, or... Actually, he lived in Oklahoma, I believe. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. right. That's right. And so he, he has not been around here. Man, talk about wouldn't have he have been great to have had on the show. I know I, as a youngster as well, mm -hmm. many of us sat around and watched uh, him do his amazing things on Hee Haw. Man, I even learned five-string banjo because of Roy Clark, man. Versatility. Yeah, man. man. He played everything. He did. He was absolutely incredible, man. And... Uh, we're all going to miss him, man. What a what an icon, man. And truly. from what I what I'm hearing, and so many tributes online, what a gracious, kind uh, man to yeah. other players and to people trying to learn. Yeah, man. He, from what I understand, yeah, he was always about helping anybody that was a player. You know. Yep. So. Yep. Um, okay. Um, oh, one more. Gosh, so <laughs> I, I got questions here. I got questions that I would ask as well. Nice. Um, on the CMA Awards, Ricky Skaggs. Yes. Oh, gosh. Oh, I was so tickled for Ricky, man. He just he just got out there and just ripped it up. I watched that again today. And I, I, I've watched it over and over. The playing was amazing. Man. And you and Ricky have, have a, had a long relationship for many years. You know, man, he has been such a dear friend to me. And, and of course, my, one of my biggest heroes, man. I, he and Danny Gatton are my two biggest heroes in life, man. And, and Ricky, because... Uh, number one, he's a Christian, loves the Lord. But number two, he's just a f phenomenal musician, yeah. you know, an artist. Yeah. And I've always loved Ricky and what he does. And, and uh, you know, not afraid to have fun in life, man. Loves to, The music will just, when you hear Ricky play, his music will just pick you up. Yeah. You know, and yeah. that's that's what music is supposed to do. It's, make, it's you know, it's supposed to make you have fun. Yeah. And, um, but then again, you know, you listen to blues because you're feeling down or yeah. whatever the case may be, yeah. you know. And so music is such an emotional outlet. But I, every time I want to feel some happiness, man, I pop on a Skaggs record. So I was so tickled for him, man. Well, speaking about feeling some happiness. Yes. Let's, uh, let's, hear, let's hear some happiness. TJ, what do you feel like, brother? Duh. Duh. <laughs> actually, TJ is a Canadian, my friend. He there is from you Toronto. Go. There you go. I so, am a Canadian. Thank you. Actually, TJ, you and I put together a little, uh, a little. Let's do that. All right. Let's do that, man. little something TJ and I have been writing together.
Somebody's asking, what amp uh, and gear are you playing through? Uh, the amp we just grabbed off of um, the uh, floor here at Groon's. It is a 1959 Fender Bassman. Um, Very cool amp. Only at Groon's can you just pop up and pull out a 1959 Bassman. Yes, very true. Um, but uh, great Great amp. Uh, what else are you running through there on your small board here? You today? know, Steve, this is my little flyboard, buddy, and I put this one together for tonight's show, actually. It starts over here with a go-go uh, caliber tuner. Mm -hmm. And, of course, uh, I don't know if you guys can get a shot of this, but it's, it's very big and blind man friendly. <laughs> so it's the best tuner on the market as far as I'm concerned. Then, of course, I'm, you know, I have really become great friends with Robert Keeley, man, and uh, right, right, right. love Keeley pedals. This is actually their new, their new, one of their newest pedals called the Aria, and it's, uh, it's the Compressor Plus and the Red Dirt Overdrive in one pedal, okay. which you can also, there's a switch in the middle where you can redirect which position you want what effect. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, all the great folks at Carl Martin, they've been so good to me over the years, I had to put the, uh, the Plexitone and in what there. Is, what is that doing for you? That gives you kind of like a... Of course, the inherent buzz in the house here, it gets, but it gives you like a Marshall Plexi. So like. It gives you like a Marshall Plexi in a box, man, you know. Wow. I want that pedal. If I could just hit it and do that lick, I would, I would buy that pedal just for that. It's fun, man. Yeah, it's, it's one of those pedals that makes you want to finger tap, man. So you turn it on, you makes you want to play rock you know <laughs> so wow. I, I guess that answers the next question the next question TJ, says so. are there any other styles that johnny plays when you're not playing country yeah man i love playing everything brother i mean i you grew up playing bluegrass didn't you i did i grew up playing bluegrass and i you know but i think over the years man in my teen years i got told i could never drive a car because i have an eye disease called nystagmus and was born with that and uh so at the time man i grabbed my 87 fender strap my dad bought me when i was 12 went out to the woodshed with a 410 custom amp yeah with a, a dod american master metal pedal and jam to and justice <laughs> for all for like hours you know so it was like this crazy heavy metal time in my life and you know i was into like sepultura and Queensryche and van halen and yeah. all those bands you know and of course, Ugly Kid Joe was out then, and yep. all these crazy bands, man. But I, I was a big fan of all that stuff. Yeah. And, of course, then Rage Against the Machine came out, and, oh, man, Tom Morello was just the bomb. I love yeah. that, man. Yeah. But, of course, I get into the Saturani and Vi stuff. And, but then again, at the same time, I was playing in a country band in my teen years, so I was learning all the Alan Jackson stuff that Brent Mason played on and, the, you know, all the Kentucky Headhunter stuff, yeah. Tim McGraw and... All the stuff that was top 40 back then, early 90s, you know. Yeah. And But then again, I, I loved Robin Ford, and I loved Stevie Ray Vaughan, so I mm -hmm. loved blues, you know. And So, I mean, yeah, every style, man, I found players that I just truly loved and would listen to all the time. Even if I couldn't pull out their licks, yeah. 
-hmm. I would still just listen and listen and listen. And what that does is it helps you craft the tones that you like in your head so that when you put together your tone, you kind of have an understanding of what you're going for. Yeah. Even though I was a kid, I still had an understanding of what tones I liked. Yeah. And so I could go into the music store and say, how's Robin Ford get that tone? Well, with a $30,000 amp, kid. Oh, well, that's, <laughs> there goes that one out the window. But, but no, it was, it was just an amazing uh, adventure, if you will. Yeah. Because as I'm learning and growing with guitar, it was the same with gear. And people say, oh, man, Johnny, you know, you, you just love gear so much. Well, I, to be honest with you, Steve, I've never been a man made of money. Uh-huh. And so I have relied on my endorsers over the years to, to help me grow my career as an artist. Yeah. But on top of that, I love being the guinea pig for any new pedal they make or yeah. they want someone to try and test market. And so it's been a real ball in my career to sit down with a pedal before anybody else hears it yeah. and go, oh, man, listen to that, dude. And it makes me pull out music I haven't played in a while and stuff like that. So That's right. pedals are like, to me, you, you get a great guitar, which I love my Kiesel, obviously. Mm-hmm. And you get a great sounding amp. And pedals, what pedals do, man, is it's like the icing on the cake or adding the jimmies or, you know, on an ice cream. You know, it's like, uh, it's just little flavorings. Right. I've heard it explained. They're they're like the colors in your your painting palette. Exactly. You have different different colors that you can use, different tools that you can use to get different sounds. Well, and hence the left side of the area gives you uh, like an overdrive, but the... You know, the Plex distortion single channel from Carl Martin gives you a Marshall sound. Yeah, completely different. So yeah. two different distortions. Mm-hmm. And people say, well, do you need two? Well, yeah, for what you're going for at the time, yeah, yeah. you might. Yeah, yeah. So I, I know, what is the Racino? I haven't seen that before. Well, what is that? actually, man, I have the ISP decimator, which cuts out all excess noise. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's a, it's a real good pedal for that, especially when you're in the studio. Mm-hmm. But the Racino is one of my newest finds, man. It's actually... One thing I've grown to find about Keeley effects is they release a pedal for a while and then they discontinue it. Mm-hmm. And then over time, people you know, like, like me get on YouTube and look mm-hmm. up different pedals and you find that, uh, you know, obviously, like I found the Racino on YouTube, called up Keeley and they're like, oh, sorry, dude, we don't make it anymore. Mm-hmm. So I hunted the pedal down and found it. What is and it essentially, it's a three. It's just a very simple three-knob digital delay is all it is. Oh, okay. okay, okay. And then, of course, I'm running on the end. I've just started a new relationship with J-Rocket pedals, mm-hmm. and I'm using their Boeing, which is a spring reverb pedal, and I just great love pedal, it. Pedal yeah. maker. Yeah. Very, and as you can see, Steve, one big knob, dude. Great for a blind guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a pretty simple pedal board, man. But, it, you know, I've taken it on many a fly dates, man. It works great. Oh, yeah. Well, we've got so many questions here. Um uh, we got a f- couple of folks asking about your bass rig there, TJ. Oh, there you go, um, brother. What do you? Uh, we, you told us about the guitar. Yep. What about? Uh, what are you running? Running into? I am running probably the greatest bass amp I've ever played through in my life. This is a, a Bergantino B amp with a reference 112 cabinet, and I have a couple of these cabs at home. And I just, I actually, my relationship with them started just a few months ago. Actually, mm-hmm. just after last um, winter NAM. Mm-hmm. And it's, I've been it's with a other, other companies sound. for a while. Yeah, this this amp is. And it's really small and it's really loud, and <clears throat> no one's ever heard of it. He so has to cool. be loud when he plays with me. That's true. <laughs> yeah, but it's, um, it's clean. It's beautiful. Clean as could be. A little 112 gives you all that. Yeah. No Give him a little bit of that, Teej. That's awesome. I love that stuff, brother. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do. Great. Does Beautiful. all that funky yeah, this, this, funk this, stuff. Uh, this amp sounds awesome. Um, good. Uh, and we've got some other questions about uh, some of your teaching stuff. Uh, we had questions about the blue stuff. Maybe we can get y'all, as we close out here in a minute, uh, we can get y'all to play maybe a good slow. Oh, yeah, man, sure. Good slow blues. As well, we're ending one thing I do out. have to say, Steve, TJ and I are both using Tsunami Cables. Man, our buddy Keith, stick me out in California, who runs Tsunami Cables. These things are the bomb diggity. Uh-huh. They're affordable cables. Uh-huh. They're made. They're built like tanks. I uh-huh. mean, they're just amazing. And so, dozens of times with my computer chair. I'm it's gonna have to get Brother Keith to send you some, man, for for the show and I'd also love, for some giveaways. Love to try it out. Yeah, yeah. Tsunami cables, folks, are the bomb. So I'm check them out. The desk, yes. Good. Yeah. good. 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 Let me, let's give away one more thing, and then we'll uh, try and land this ship. 
hey, we're, I'm going to give away one of these blue um, Groon Guitar water bottles. Actually, Steve, I'll take that home. Okay. Uh, I'll take Yeah, thank you, buddy. There you go. We're going to give this one to Johnny yeah, Island. There you go. No, I'm just teasing. No, man. go ahead and take it. Take no, it, no, it. no, no, no. I'm teasing. I don't want to. I'll, I'll, I'll buy one. I love no, Groon. No, 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 no. Um, we'll get you one. I got more stuff to give away. This is yours. This is yours. Are you sure? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, see, yeah. Steve, I've lost a lot of weight, dude, and I drink a lot of water. Well, I know you're, so, you're looking fantastic. Well, thank you. I'm getting there, buddy. <laughs> Slowly but surely. All right, so we're going to give away, now that Johnny has stolen the water bottle. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> if, if, somebody, if somebody wants the water bottle, we can do it. <laughs> All right, so that means we're actually going to give away a Groon Guitars shirt. This is a kind of a reddish, uh, pinkish-looking cool one. Pinkish. Well, maybe if you... No, 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 no. Salmon. It's salmon. salmon. That's right. Salmon. That sounds more... Angry more guys. An angry salmon. An angry <laughs> there you go. Salmon. There you go. So the winner of this is Wade Staley. Good. Wade, you're one of our great guys. Wade, hope you love pink, Come brother. On, Wade. Hey, if you can, if you can, Wade... Uh, I don't know which camera to look in. Wade, if you could give us, uh, send, send me your information at service at mightyoakmusic.com. And, or if you could type in here what size you want so I make sure I can get you the right size. Uh, and if you prefer a different color, they do have gray and over there as well. Come but on, man. Angry salmon. If, if you're not man enough to wear a pink salmon shirt and feel confident. Shows your, you your confidence. No. Sensitive. Wade, you're great. I'm so glad, so glad you won. See, dude, you get folks. that shirt, and then you order a hot pink Kiesel. Yeah, See, there, there you go. go. Then you go on the go on the road. And then you go on the '80s rock, you know, tour. Um, if you're if you're if you're here, Wade, type in the chat and let us know what uh, size to take uh, for you, so we can do that. Um, all right, it's time to land this ship. Um, if you have not, if you're watching us on YouTube, thank you so much for doing that. We are, are I'm constantly blown away. We have over 13,000 subscribers now wow. on our YouTube channel and a uh, couple of million views. And uh, we're constantly putting up new stuff all the time. If you have not yet subscribed to us, please p hit that subscribe button on YouTube. And that will get you to every time that we go live, uh, which is most Tuesday nights. I usually try and do about two or three a month. And uh, you will get a notification that we have gone live for that. So that helps up for that. Um, our next live lesson is going to be next week, if I can play. So if I can play, we'll do a live lesson. And I wanted to teach you guys a Christmas song. It's getting about that time. Tis the season for me to be teaching Christmas songs. So I'll try and do that next week, if I can play. So if I can't play, then uh, we'll, we'll save that for the week after that. But hopefully... I'll be getting out of this dumb tendonitis thing pretty soon. But it is a weird... I feel so bad for you, Steve. That's not good, buddy. And all kind of guitar players, we, when you mention this, and they kind of go, yep, yep, I know that, been there. And uh, it is a, a strange little injury. I can lift something heavy, and I'm fine, but I can't play a G chord without screaming for mercy. You know, buddy, I think, too, a lot of times people say, well, Johnny, how'd you get these hand troubles, man? And I'm like, well... It's not that I play, you know, 8 to 12 hours a day sometimes. It's, man, not only are you playing them that many hours, but you're lugging amps and you're lugging it's big physical. pedal boards and you're lugging yeah. stuff all the time. So you need some arms on you. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But sometimes it can affect, the, affect those hands, man. So Take care you. of your hands and arms and, and right. wrists and fingers and things like that. Um, I know you have had your share of oh, my hand goodness. issues as well. Yes, I have, buddy. Um, I really and have. And it is, de it is de debilitating. At, at it times. Is. It and really so, is, man. It can stop you dead in your tracks. Yep, yep. And right now I'm stopped. So so I hope to be spinning out of this soon. Um, all right. I want to thank our um, moderators, Neil and Doug. You guys are such a blessing. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you for every link that y'all are putting up. Um, thanks to our producer, David, who's been frantically running back and forth to cameras. Steven has been running back and forth to cameras as well. Thank you, our wonderful studio audience yes. here. Hey, hey! You guys rock. <laughs> Amazing. If any of you guys out there that are watching us are coming through Nashville, let me know. And uh, send me an email at service at mightyoakmusic.com, and we will try and put it together where you guys can... Uh, Come watch a show, or we can get together with Greg Voros and see the store, all sorts of fun stuff. So it is just a joy to have folks here with us. In fact, we even have Mike Beyer and uh, the, some of the wonderful guys from, from 
his organization, SOAR, Sounds of Acoustic Recovery, that's uh, helping veterans with uh, music therapy Amazing. and with guitar, learning how to play guitar. Johnny, I know you've done some work with that as well. I love is, my veterans, buddy. It sure is do. a great, great work. We're honored to have you, Mike, here with us and honored for the work that you do um, for helping so many people out. All right, enough of me yabbering on. Um, We've given away everything I can think to give away. Steve, Play literally, us. bud, you want to give that bottle away? No, no. Are you sure? <laughs> well, <laughs> he done gave it to me, folks. Now, y'all going to be mad at me. <laughs> I did want to bring up one thing. I'd love to thank TJ Armstrong for being here tonight. Yes. Give TJ a round of applause. And, uh, no problem. And, guys, if you're even, you know, in the Chatham, Virginia area, because that's where Kimmy and I are moving, even if you don't, you know, live in that area and you still like a lesson with me, all you have to do is go to johnnyhighlandlessons.com. Yep. And uh, you'll be talking to John Herring, my manager. You can book a lesson, whether it's Skype, FaceTime, or what have you. I'd love to teach you. Yeah. And uh, good luck with your playing always, guys. That's right. That's right. Keep on picking. All right. Give so, us Steve, you want some slow blues, my brother? Just slow blues. Uh, pick one, as long as it's not R sharp minor or C demolished. Mm. <laughs> uh, let's do the great Canadian key of A. Oh, let's do it. <laughs> so. <laughs> Thank you. 
Keep up the great work in your own playing. It's been a great show. You guys have a great Thanksgiving. Thank you, Johnny. Thank, Thank you, Steve. TJ. Appreciate it, brother. Honored to have you both here. Man, with us. honored to be here, pal. Keep up the great work. We'll see you guys next time.